In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to integrate Hardhat into an existing Foundry repo. Many times we'll find a nice repo, but it'll be set on a certain framework, and we want to use tools from either Foundry or Hardhat. So we're going to show you how to use both. Let's go ahead and begin. We're going to go ahead and set up Foundry. You'll see that I already have a folder ready to go. So we're going to go ahead and hit Forge in it, and it's going to set up our repo, and we're good. Let's go ahead and open it up. And you see that we have the standard Forge repo with the source folder, our library folder, everything inside that we need with our Git modules and our Foundry Toml, right? And so everything that we need, like if we want to do Forge build, is already ready to go. That'll compile it for us. Oh, and it seems like we are missing a repo. It's the DS test. Sometimes that does happen for Windows users, so we'll have to get that directly from them. And that is at the submodule. Let's go ahead and grab that. We're going to go forge, install, and we're going to go right to the repo. Oh, and we have to make sure we hit no commit. Then we can forge build. And we're good. So we were successfully able to compile it and uh, use it as is. So now we want to add a hard hat. What we need to do is set up a preparation for our hard hat. So we're going to go ahead and init it. So we're going to go to yarn init. And just for simplicity, I'm just going to go ahead and default yes. Okay. And so now that we have our package.json, we can go ahead and install hard hat. So we're going to go yarn add. And you can use npm as well. But I'm going to go ahead here, local dev, hard hat. Okay, and now we're going to go ahead and set it up. MPX hard hat. And then I'm going to go ahead and choose TypeScript for this. We're going to go ahead and enter default settings. And then we have to install all the requirements here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this. And install. And now we have our hard hat installed. You'll see that we all had our hard hat config TypeScript. And that we have our contract library with the standard default lock.soul that we're used to seeing on in any hard hat configuration. So now what we need to do in order to get these to work together is we're gonna to have to install a plugin from found um, from hard hat. And we're gonna go ahead and type this in. It's gonna be yarn add local dev dependency. It's gonna be hard hat foundry. It's a plugin for both. All right, that's installed. And then what we're gonna to need to do is add the import into our hard hat config file which is right over here. We're gonna go ahead and put it underneath the toolbox and we'll import that. So now theoretically we are ready to go. We're gonna make a small adjustments to the Tomo file in a second, but we're gonna show you that we can use both. So I can go forge build and it will default on the Tomo file right now as well. So nothing's changed, everything's skipped as well. So you see that in hard hat, <clears throat> whenever it goes, it's gonna look for the source library and it's for the libraries, it's gonna to go to library. Uh, when you install a boundary to a hard hat project, it will change the Tomo file to, to match the settings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab a copy of it and then paste it. Well, actually, I'll just comment this out so you guys can see that. And I'm going to paste it just underneath. And so it's going to pull from the source, from the contracts library. The two libraries it's going to pull from is going to be from node modules and library. And then the testing path is going to be under test. And then it's also going to have a cache pass. So then if we do this, I should be able to do mpx hard hat, mpx hard hat test or compile. Oops, helps if I spell it right. And you can see that it compiles correctly, right? And if we hit mpx hard hat test, you'll see that my lock files are now working as well. If I comment this out and go back to the original default, you'll see that we won't be able to test our hard hat. So if I go MPX hard hat test,
And so you see the test will not work because it doesn't know where the artifacts are. It's looking in the, in the wrong location for the artifacts. It's looking in the wrong cache location. So testing won't work. So what we need to do is make some adjustments. So we're going to go ahead and comment this old one out. And we're going to bring the new one in. And for now, we're going to work off our uh, original contracts file based on our hard hat. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this source. And I'm going to get rid of the script. And uh, we'll get rid of this cache as well here. And so now we have a basic hard hat project right now with a Foundry Tomble system. So this will get where we're started and we'll build a small little functional contract so you can see how you can use both. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and clear out our contracts. We're gonna get rid of the lock.sol file. And we're gonna make quite a few adjustments here. I'm gonna go ahead and bring in a couple files. We're gonna bring in a simple repo called pricefeed.sol. I'm going to copy and paste this in. We're going to go through the code really quickly. And let me explain the contract. We're going to be importing Open Zeppelin's ownable because we want to control certain functions for the only owner. And we're going to be using API 3's price feed reader through the iProxy.sol. Uh, what this is, is basically two functions that we have here. It's going to be set proxy addresses, meaning we are going to set our price feed that we want. So let's say we want an ETH USD price feed on a certain chain. Then we're going to set it to that proxy address, and that's how we're going to read it. And then we're going to read our data feed, right? So we're going to have our data feed. So once we have our proxy address, it's going to read ETHUSD. It's going to return a price of, or the value that is the price at the current time, and the timestamp of when that price was updated. Uh, because this is default int 224, I'm converting it to a UN256. So that way, if we want to use it for a DAP or anything that requires a UN256 return, uh, we can easily convert it this way. Okay. And so now for our scripts and our test, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of these. These are all default uh, hard hat and foundry. So we're gonna get rid of those. I'm gonna go ahead and actually get some scripts in here. I'm gonna copy and paste them. We're not gonna do those all from scratch. That would take way too long for this tutorial. So I'm gonna have two scripts here. I'm gonna go ahead and paste it down. And so we have a deploy script that we're used to seeing in JavaScript. We are using ether six. So just a quick review, or we'll review it again, is this is the old way people, people would do it with get contract factory. Um, and now with Ether6, we have this ability to do deploy contract with a slightly different way, and then we'll verify it. And then for the scripts for Foundry, we have a different way with uh, Solidity, in which we can run a script to run our tests as well. Okay, and then we're gonna run our test. We're gonna get rid of this. We'll come back to that in a minute. Let's get rid of this lock test. <clears throat> and we're gonna bring in our own test as well. Let me go ahead and copy and paste that in and paste. Great. And so in our test, we have a test that's going to basically test, uh, you know, the functions of deploying and only owner and making sure we can read a function. And then we have a test price feed from Foundry that we're going to do the same thing, but within with the Foundry system. So basically an exact clone of the two tests for the different styles on there. And we're going to show you the difference between the two. And so in order to get this to work, we're going to have to install it. And so just a reminder under foundry.toml. Now we used to see, like if you're a Foundry user, you'll probably see something like this where you're importing your libraries, right? And you'll have your remappings as well on here. And so then you would have to like in, forge install and then install right in the GitHub repo. Um, but many times we'll see repos that are looking like this, where they have these at open Zeppelin at API three. And so, Personally, I found it easier to be able to just copy those in and then yarn install for hard hat. And then if I had to do it on Foundry, I'd have to look it up the exact repo and then get all the details of where that was. So because we have this hybrid option, right, and we have the ability to check the node modules and library, we only have to install it in the no install it on the node modules. So that makes our life a little bit easier if you're used to that kind of setup. So just as example, we're gonna go ahead and hit yarn install, yarn add, and we'll go ahead and add in the open Zeppelin contracts. And that way your repo can stay consistent across the board instead of having like different imports across different ways. You know, some people do it without the at and then you're kind of forced to foundry. So here you can do both. So I'm going to go ahead and install that. And we'll install those packages. Okay, great. So now theoretically we should be able to MPX hardhat compile. 
and now we know it's re reading from the contracts. And we're looking good, and we should be able to forge build. Oh, and it's trying to read from our testing function. So let me jump on that really quick because forge build goes through the test as well instead of just compiling the main contract. Let's go ahead and look at our testing contract as well. And you see that we have this mock date DAPI. Uh, because we are looking at an Oracle, I am going to have to mock an Oracle for our testing because we're not deploying the mainnet. We are going to need to basically get you know fake balances coming back from us. So in order to do that, I create a mock folder and I'll cover that right now. Let me go ahead and put this in contracts. I'm going to go ahead and paste in this mock folder that has this mock DAPI. So just so we know in the price feed, you know, I'm getting this read data feed. I'm calling this proxy and I'm ex expecting to get a timestamp and a value, correct? So in my mock DAPI, we're going to have to deploy that, you know, for our, in our local testing to see what we get. So basically what I'm doing is I'm going to set the value. I'm going to set the value of a price feed and I'm going to set the value of a timestamp. And then when someone reads it or what they call the, the proxy, I'm going to return that value. I'm going to return that timestamp. So I'm basically mimicking an Oracle uh, locally in order to make this happen. So you don't have to use like really, really fancy tools. All it's doing is calling a response and then it's going to receive that response. Right. And we're just going to go ahead and load it up with the response for our testing. So now that we have this mock API, we can, again, you know, make sure that we can compile it. And you see now that it's compiling. And there we go. So now, you know, again, once, once to recap, we can do NPX hard hat compile, and we just did a forge build. So we can compile it with both compilers. Now that the TOML file is referring to the same location, we are now able to use both. So we can use either or whatever we choose of our liking. Okay. And so let's go ahead and look at the tests. So in a hard hat file, we test with TypeScript, JavaScript, right? And we run like the deploy before. And right now I'm setting a, a generic price and I'm doing a timestamp for latest. Everything standard with notes on a JavaScript TypeScript type of environment where I'm deploying the mock DAPI and then I'm getting my price feed. And then I'm just checking to see here if I am the right owner to make sure only owner works. And then I'm setting the price feed, checking ownership to make sure things get reverted with. And then I'm going to console out the uh, price feed right here. So I'm setting the, the value to a certain number. So let's go ahead and run that test. So I'm going to go MPX hard hat test and run that. I'm going to go ahead and check that console. And there we go. And it's a really quick test to see that things are going. I'm checking out the price. I'm checking out the block timestamp. Great. So, you know, some people like this. Maybe you're a front end developer as well, or you're setting up stuff that you want to interact with your front end developer and you want to run specific tests in JavaScript and TypeScript. Uh, Hard Hat is great for that, right? So you can test your contract against what, how it would react with React and TypeScript. Let's say you are more of a Solidity dev and you want Foundry, you want to do more fuzzing tests and you know all the tools that are happening in Foundry. Then you can set up your test price feed T, that's all for testing. And so then I'll import my price feed, I'll import my, my mock DAPI proxy. And then again, I'm going to bring in my, my price feed dot soul. And now we're going to run some tests. And so the way this works, we have to run a setup. So I'm going to go ahead and deploy my price feed through a script with the same script that I do here. It's basically just starting a broadcast, sending a price feed to new price feed, deploying my contracts in a sense. And so that deploys that, and that way I get some contract addresses here. As we continue on, so we we're able to get these deployers to run, we'll get these two addresses. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to test ownership the same way. Let me put this side by side actually to get this test up and running. I'm going to have this test, and then I'm going to bring this back and have this test. So uh, basically this, this setup with the script runs all this on the before. And then under deployment, I'm making sure that I'm testing the owner. So deployment should set the right owner here. I'm making sure that the owner is correct. I also have a couple of console logs, uh, you know, console logging it out. And then I'm going to make sure to test the price feed. And here I'm going to set the price feed to make sure that my price feed is working. The one caveat about foundry testing is that you're contract to contract. So you're not like user to contract. The contract is interacting with another contract. So it helps you update your Solidity skills a little bit more and learn how contracts interact with other contracts versus users interacting with other contracts. So you got to do a couple, you know, little tricks here. Um, so here I'm setting a price of into 24 um, and 100 ETH. And then my expected value when I convert it is going to be UN 256. Just to go back to that, we're going to go here. You see that I, I typecast convert it. 
All right, so I convert it and I return a UNT 256. So that's why I have expected value. I can't typecast it here. And so I'm going to expect to revert if the, I set the proxy address as so. I am not the owner, right? So it's going to make sure that I can't update the, the price feed. Same thing here. You know, I want to make sure that the, uh, the proxy feed should be reverted because I'm not the owner, right? I'm, I'm doing something else on that aspect, like there's another wallet address. And now here we're going to start the prank as message sender. So we're making sure that everything that happens after this prank is going to come from message sender. That means everything below will come from that. And then when we hit the stop prank, it'll stop coming from this uh, address, right? So that's how we use the prank. And so I just, you know, set the block time. I'm able to set the DAPI values like I would here. And then I'm going to set the proxy address. And then I'm going to get a return of what I would get. So being able to read what I, I'm expecting. And then I'm just doing an assert to make sure that the values that I'm expecting are correct. So if I do forge test, it will run through this test and uh, let me know if it's a success. And so we're good. And then the beauty things about this is I can do, you know, a much deeper one to get the console logs with the dash VV. And I'll get a much more in deep and you see that I have my console log and I'll be able to get my, my price feed right here. And the beauty of these forge tests is I can get really deep and I can start getting really into like, you know, the deep analysis of each transaction. And that's the beauty of Foundry, right? We can get really, really deep and analyze all these deep, deep tests. So, you know, you can see the value of each one providing you know, one deep respect other than the other, right? So maybe you're not a front end dev, maybe you're a pure solidity dev that that loves Foundry, but the 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 main repo is in hard hat. So then you can still use your tool suite in order to, you know, test this out and make sure you're looking good. Right. So, you know, that that's pretty much it for tests. And so we have kind of like a side by side comparison in order to do that, in order to see the difference on there. All right. And deployment. Uh, so <laughs> uh, deploying on Foundry, in my personal opinion, is a little bit um, harder to do, tedious versus a, uh, a deploy from Hardhat. And there's a lot of tools out there like Hardhat Deploy and all these other suites that will let you deploy across multiple chains and and just a lot of a lot of tool sets that have been available because it's been around longer. So you know, setting arguments and anything in in a um, Setting arguments in a, in a variable in your script makes life really easy. You can see here, this is an either six version. Again, this is like a 5.7.3, you know, where you get the contract factory, you, you set it to deploy, and then you wait for the deployment, and then you, you console it out. Here in Ether6, they have this option to deploy contract where you get the name of the contract, any constructor arguments. This one doesn't have any, and then any overrides all in a single line. And then we wait for the deployment. And then you know we, we console log out our address, and then we just have the ability to uh, verify our contract on deployment. I'm just going to wait you know a few seconds for that to happen, and then I'm going to go ahead and verify with uh, the hardhat tools already. Uh, with the deployment on Foundry, it's a little bit different, right? We we can try to run a script, but it doesn't work very well. Uh, it's better to type it all in by hand. And so what we need to do is get some .env environment variables here. And so we're going to go ahead and take a quick pause. I'm going to set up some test environment variables, and then I'll show you how this all works. Okay, so let's talk about deployment. So for, for most cases, you know, with a hard hat, you basically run the script and you run deploy.ts or deploy.js, and it grabs your arguments, grabs your contract, and then it shoots it out, right? And then for Foundry, it uses a special scheme. It, it's, it's a little bit longer, and I'm going to go ahead and show you. I'm going to go ahead and paste this right here. And we'll just do it underneath here so it's a little bit clearer to see. Uh, basically what happens is you're going to type in forge create and then you're going to grab an RPC URL and that's going to be the RPC URL for the chain that you're looking to go. So like if it was uh, Sepolia, it would be like, you know, some random website that went to Sepolia and then we'll have construct your arguments and that would be like if you were deploying a token or something. But for our case, we don't have any constructor args so we can get rid of that for us. And then it would have our private key and then we would load our private key. And then if we wanted to verify, we would, you know, have either scan API key and then our either scan API key. And then on top of that, we would also have a verify a token. And then if we were using um, a, uh, a legacy one, we would have to make sure to tag legacy as well. Like if they didn't support EIC 1551. And so some of these, chains don't support that. So like if you ever have an error with verifying on Foundry, you would have to run legacy. 
And then on the final piece, once you're done with that, you know, let's just go ahead and enter that. We would have to go to the source of the contract. So it would be on our case, you know, because it's not founder, we're using the hard hat hybrid and we're using the contracts library. Usually it'll be source, right? If, as for that, we're here, we're doing contracts. And then the name of the contract, which is price fee dot soul. And then the name of the contract itself, which is also price fee. This is also the name of the contract as well. So sometimes the name of the contract and the contract name itself uh, can vary. And then we'd have that. And then we would deploy that. But then you'd have to manually type in your private key, manually type in your RPC URL, manually type in your API. It gets, uh, you know, it gets tedious, right? And one nice thing is you can always encrypt your keys and that's a really nice tool. But if you're trying to do this to multiple chains, it's not ideal, right? And so, you know, obviously we have, I'm just gonna go ahead and comment this out. Obviously we have different options of creating a .emv file. So for this example, for this repo, when you fork it, I'm showing you different ways to, um, to deploy to multiple sets. I have a certain framework where I have all the chains that I want to deploy on already ready to go. I'll have like an Infura API key or an Alchemy API key ready to go. I'll have a, a, a RPC specific one. This one doesn't require an R, uh, API, so I just have the straight public RPC. Maybe I have one with the API for Infura or Alchemy and then the other one for Testnet. I'll have my private key and then depending on the chain that I want to verify on, if it's Etherscan or Sepolia or Gurley, I'll have that there. If it's like a Polygon or Mumbai or Polygon ZK EVM, I'll have that API key. And then, you know, if I'm doing to new chains like Linea, uh, I'll have those API keys, depending on the block explorer that I'm trying to verify on, right? And so uh, in the .emv and, you know, this, this information is really not important. Like this private key is a bunk private key anyway. Uh, but you'll see that I have like, I would have my Infura key. Then I'll have like, you know, I have my Anchor RPC. Here I have an Infura RPC that would, you know, have my API, API key at the end. Uh, here I have my Mumbai one with my API key at the end, which will probably be the same or different. And, you know, my private key, which literally has no real funds on it. Uh, I'll probably burn it right after this. And then my different API keys for each chain, right? And so if we're going to do this to Foundry, uh, we definitely want to do it in a certain way. And like for Mac users, uh, the, the really nice advantage that they have here is that they can use source.emv, right? .emv, and then it'll just pull the uh, the .emv file and keep it locally. For Windows, we don't have that luxury. So what I did is I'm gonna go ahead and create a new file here and just call it source.emv windows. And this is a little uh, PowerShell script. So for Windows, you can use PowerShell or DOS and this was a PowerShell one. Um, and so what this does is it loads it to the PowerShell. And so this is this quick uh, script that I have here um, that I made. And what that does is it'll load our .emv file to the shell. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that. And now we have it set. So the way we are able to call it is we're gonna echo and it's gonna, I'm gonna show you how it looks. So we're gonna go ahead and echo. I'm gonna put this just underneath and then comment that out. So it's gonna echo dollar sign .emv and then the key that we're looking to get. So if we go back to our .emv and I'm gonna show you that, I'm gonna go ahead and echo our dollar sign .emv and then we're going to say, what do we want to uh, echo back? Let's just do the private key. And then you'll see that we have our private key getting echoed back. If I wanted to echo something else, just let me do it really quick. Uh, let's say linea, oops, dot EMV, and then linea API key. We're going to get our API key back, right? So then when we run our script with this forge, create and then we're going to go rpc url dash url and then we're going to go ahead and then type in dollar sign env boom and then our rpc url let's just say we're going to go to the linea or uh in you know let's say for right now polygon rpc on rpc url now it has that path that we have set Right, and then we're gonna go into the next part where it's gonna be like private key. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing. Private key, oops, all right. And then we're gonna go ahead and throw in our Etherscan API key. So we're gonna go Etherscan key. 
and then the same thing again and we're gonna probably should have used shorter names for these but you get the idea and then we're gonna go ahead and verify right because we want to verify our contract and then we're gonna go to the source of our contract which is contracts and then price feed that soul and then price feed the name of the contract and so every time you want to deploy this to a new chain, you would kind of have to follow this while still kept keeping your information private from that script. Again, it does also have a password protect on there, but uh, it is not my favorite, personal favorite to, uh, to deploy it on Foundry, right? Because it's just a lot of work every time we do it. So then let's take it to the other way, like where we can do this. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel this because I don't even have the full thing and the private keys kind of bunk anyway. Let's go ahead and clear that out. All right, and so let's go to the hard hat config, right? So here, you know, we have this hard hat. I'm going to go ahead and bring in my modified one, and we're just going to break it down really quick. I'm going to go ahead and paste over here and just show you all the different options. So again, everything is the same. I'm bringing in the .env, so then we can read from our .env file. I am using two compilers. Right now, we're just using 8.19, but let's say you had another library that you wanted to use. You can pop in the other library that you can, so it'll just download that repo so you can compile multi-contracts with different versions, which is great. And then we get into the networks, and the networks is where it's here, where now I have this uh, framework of all my .env files. Let me go ahead and split frame that. And so you'll see that, you know, I'll have my girly RPC that will process girly with my private key. I'll have polygon, that will have my polygon RPC, Mumbai, Mumbai. And let's say we have these new test nets or these new you know chains that aren't really supported. Uh, we can manually put it in here. This is for Mantle test net, and I can do the RPC directly from here. This is for zk EVM test net, so I can put that here. Uh, Linear test net, you know, I have this this path, and then it's asking for my Infura API key. So then I have this uh, Infura key that it's available to me that I'll just call it for any time. So that's great. Um, as for verifying, you'll see that we can have API keys for each and every one of these uh, chains, right? So that way we have them all stored, ready to go. So I can have my Polygon address right here. And this is all within this object right here. And so I have my Polygon, Polygon Mumbai, Gurley, Polygon ZK EVM Testnet, Linea Testnet. Now, if they're not natively supported by uh, Hardhat and the toolset, you can then add the custom chains and they're right here. So here I have the ZKM Testnet ready to go here and then I have my linear test net with the chain ID everything ready to go so I can deploy it and have it run right off the top so really really straightforward for me personally to use because then I have this framework that I can use over and over again so then I am ready to go so let's go ahead and deploy some stuff okay so I have a new repo set up I have a .env file with all my private keys and API keys ready to go it is the exact same repo uh, we're going to go ahead and deploy to Linea with Hardhat. So let's go ahead and look at that deploy script. And it's just going to grab it. So let's go ahead and go npx hardhat run scripts and then uh, deploy.ts network. And let's make sure we have that correct. It's going to be Linea testnet. I'm going to go ahead and just copy this in. And let's deploy it up. And so let's go look at that uh, deploy script really quick again. Um, so it's just going to grab our contract, right? We have no arguments in here and uh, no overrides for any value, you know, droppings like uh, sending ETH or anything like that. Uh, it's just going to give us our price feed target. It's going to wait a few seconds to verify once it's done, and then it'll verify for us. So let's go ahead and enter that. And there we go. So we can see that the... Uh, you know, the contract was deployed to this address. I waited about, you know, 60 seconds for this to make sure because sometimes it waits for the block uh, to, to update and sometimes the block explorer doesn't update. So we waited a little bit of time to make sure that it did, ver you know, have time to update. It will make sure that it has time to update. And then we uh, verify our contract and you'll say the contract is verified, uh, ready to go. I think I've deployed it already, so it's already been verified. Uh, but let's say this didn't work. You could always run the npx hardhat verify command and then check the network. And then uh, we'll do linear, let me see, that, linear testnet. And then we're going to go ahead and grab this contract address and then use that same API skill in order to, to do so. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the same thing on a hardhat, make sure that we have it all up and running. 
first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this source.emv just in case to grab this again. Make sure that we are looking good. Okay, so now our EMV files are loaded. And I'm going to go ahead and grab this. I have it saved right here. So we have this forge create so we don't have to keep typing it over and over again. I'll go ahead and copy that down. And so I'm going to paste that. So we have forge create. The RPC URL is on Mumbai. It's going to use the Mumbai RPC URL. It's going to use my private key. We have the Etherscan Ether API key with the Polygon Etherscan API key. We're looking to verify it. And then we also have the contracts location and for price feed dot soul and then columns with the name of this contract Let me just clear that space and so we're going to go ahead and hit enter it's going to go ahead and compile and then run through the same uh, scripts this time i'm just using mumbai because i know it works with the verify and doesn't have to use the legacy And there we go. So you see that we go ahead, let me scroll this up. You see that we are deployed to the contract address. It gives me the transaction hash and then it'll start the verification. Uh, it's going to wait for it to wait. So it actually like waits for it to see if it pokes up that hash. And then um, we're going to go ahead and say submit verification. And then it basically says, all right, it's already been verified. I've done it before. I've done it for the demo. Uh, we're looking good to go. And so that's how you would deploy for both of them, right? So you have the options of, you know, writing it manually. Um, as more tools become available to you, you have um, the choice, right, of which way you want to go. A lot of people are now, you know, sending repos in Foundry, but we like to use the hard hat tools. So I myself found it, you know, difficult to, you know, find a good, you know, a good happy medium between the two. So being able to go back and forth between these two and rebuild a repo that I want with, you know, being able to test it in Foundry and be able to de deploy it in Hardhat or use Hardhat Deploy or any of the other tools that are available in Hardhat makes my, my uh, deployment life a little bit easier and makes my testing life a little bit more efficient. So, you know, that's why we're making this tutorial to make your life a little bit better, a little bit easier, <laughs> you know. So um, if you have questions, reach out. This was a pretty straightforward price feed. Uh, you know, simple API feed to get a price feed address. This is really simple to do. Wanted to show you some mock addresses. Hopefully you learned a skill. If anything, if you have any questions, technical questions about API 3 or anything to help you be a better builder, reach out to us, API 3. You know, uh, you can reach us on our Discord. Uh, you can reach us on the website, on Twitter. All right, talk to you guys soon. Have a good one.